Welcome back to the Jazz Lab. I'm Jerry Brad. And I'm Jerry Clay. This week's subject is one that brings out surprisingly strong feelings among parents. Classifiers. Do they suck? Or do they not suck? Let's take it into a lab and find out. Uh, dude? Yeah, man. There could be no debate on whether or not parents have a love-hate relationship with a pacifier. Yet the question remains, should you use a nookie or not? Senator Daddy Clay, we'll start with you. All parents know there's nothing more heartbreaking than the sound of a child crying in the night. But for a parent to simply burst through into the bedroom and plug that child into a plastic pacifier, well, that's a, that's a short-term solution. Rather, you should think about the future. Think about that day two or three years from now when you must pry that little plastic pacifier out of the hand of a crying child. Think about potential dental problems. Think about delays in speech. Think about increased ear infections. Although no studies have shown conclusively that any of that is true. <laughs> think about other important things like the loss of smiles and laughter that you won't see hidden behind that plastic shield, that mask that some um, so easily call a pacifier. Governor Daddy Brad. With all due respect, Senator, that is typical of the partisanship from parents on your side of the aisle. A happy and peaceful child is a happy and peaceful child. Why not pacify? <laughs> you speak of the future? Well, most children, most children will give up the pacifier between the ages of two and four years old. And for those who don't, for those who don't, Senator, you can take the pacifier away. Senator, would you take your children's fingers away? Let's talk about science, none other then the American Academy of Pediatrics has said that if you give a child a pacifier right before bed, it will reduce the likelihood of SIDS. Oh, we want to talk about science. Let's talk about science. Let's talk about Senator, delayed breastfeeding. Senator, Let's talk about I, the delay in the critical um, breastfeeding Senator, phase of life. I want to talk about I breastfeeding. That's because you're saying stupid things. Did I interrupt you? You're shorter than me. I'm going to give you something to suck on, you're Senator. Oh, oh. I'll give you something to suck on. Yeah, I, I, you I have see to my find it Senator, first. Do you want to see I my have to find it, you're a silicone Senator. sucker. You like sucking on the silicone, don't you? Honey, honey, he didn't mean that. Do you want to see my passy? You want to see it? Even if you decide you want to use pacifiers, there's no guarantee that your baby will take one. My kids, for example, wouldn't rise to the bait no matter how it was offered. And if mom is breastfeeding, you probably want to wait four to six weeks before you introduce the pacifier. This helps avoid nipple confusion. So, you go to buy your first pacifier. How do you know if it's a good one? Latex will wear out a whole lot faster than silicone will. Latex breaks down in sunlight. Um, latex is natural, it's from a tree. Silicone is man-made. Um, however, it does last a whole lot longer. So a latex pacifier, if it's used every day, will probably last about four weeks, whereas a silicone pacifier might last up to two months. Well, you look at the clarity of the nipple. Yeah. Look at the grade of the silicone. Right. Uh, you can't really test it when it's in the package. That's not true. supposed to. Right. But um, but yeah, as long as um, as long as it's got a good nipple, the Hi, kids are gonna like it. Nice. Buy a couple of different shapes at first, but don't stock up until you figure out which one your baby likes the best. And you may want to invest in one of those gizmos that attaches the pacifier to your infant's clothing. There are lots of different designs out there. But never, never tie the pacifier to your baby. Terrible idea. Though you may be tempted, because one of the biggest downsides of pacifiers, sooner or later, that pacifier's gonna hit the deck. So the pacifiers hit the deck. It's covered in crud, carpet fuzz, God knows what. You gotta clean it off. Some dads will go with the sort of elemental method of 
of cleaning a pacifier. It goes like this. Clean pacifier. Whatever you do, don't put it in your mouth to clean it and then give it back to the baby. Regardless of whether you sterilize. First time parent. <coughs> excuse me. Or just rinse very carefully. Someday your kids are going to have to give up their wookie wookie. Now some parents will wean the kid before nine months. If you don't do it then, your next jumping off point between two and three years. Most kids will give it up on their own. It's kind of like potty training. Kids aren't going to go off to college wearing diapers and sucking on a passy. Yeah, but most experts agree. You want to have your kid dump the passy by age three. Opinions vary about the best way to break the habit. Some folks go cold turkey. Others like to do it gradually. You know, positive reinforcement, star charts, that kind of deal. Now, I have heard some people recommend the deflation method, that you take a pin and you pop the nipple there. But doesn't the thing then get all filled up with spit? Maybe break? Sounds kind of gross. Yeah, it is gross. If you've had success with the passy weaning process, drop us a comment and let us know your secrets. Passy weaning process. <laughs> it's technical. Love them or hate them, pacifiers are a fact of parenting life. Here's to them, the humble binky. Cheers. Cheers. Well, it's all fresh from here from the dead left. Dude, I, I did some bacon around mine. I think I just took up food. <laughs> well, that's what that is. Could somebody change me? <laughs> Intern! That guy needs to be changed. And not in a good way either. That's not comfortable. <laughs>